Um, I'm going to talk today about the digital revolution and its connection to education. I'm certainly very grateful to have the opportunity to be invited here. Um, I'd, I'd like to begin with a picture that I, you saw many times during the children's presentation. I, I lost count at about eight times that some variation of this picture was shown. And I think that uh, many of the rest of you, like me, were, are old enough to remember when we first had this picture. This is a video version of it because we now have a satellite at the Lagrange point, so we actually can see the moon occasionally pass between the satellite and the Earth. So this is the modern version of the picture um, that's actually real time. Um, but seeing that, seeing that picture, I think, made us all feel like somehow we were all part of a single organism, a single planet, that we were all connected in a way that maybe we never understood before. And that's, to me, a very compelling example of, of how technology can bring us together. It can touch our hearts, not just our minds. Um, but of course, technology can also bring us apart. And I, we have the digital technologies of the computer and the internet, which honestly could go either way. It could become yet one more barrier between the haves and the have-nots, um, or it bec could become the greatest tool to connect us and equalize us and give us all access to the, to the same world. And whether it does one of those or the others or what combination of those it does, it depends on the choices that we make. And so what I'd like to talk today about is some of those choices. And I think it's in our control how digital technology comes out, which, whether it's something that brings us together or, or, or separates us. And so I, I won't be using any more slides. Uh, so you can turn that off. But the... Um, I, was, I was very lucky in my childhood that my father was an epidemiologist. So any time there was an epidemic somewhere, we got to live there. Um, and so I spent my childhood moving around uh, throughout the world, and I got educated in many different kinds of schools, many different kinds of cultures. I got to go to you know, wonderful, well-equipped private schools, I got to go to public schools, I got to go to little one-room schoolhouses and out in the jungle in the eastern Congo or um, uh, like uh, Dr. Basu, I, I, I got to go to a very good school in Calcutta. Um, and so I got a sampling of different educational styles and different ways of using things and different ways of using technology in schools. And of course, when I was a child, the big technology of teaching was a book. And we're not accustomed to thinking of a book as technology because it's, it's always been around and we've learned to use it very well and it's very well integrated with our, our teaching. But of course, it is a technology. It's a human invention that was created as a tool. And in fact, the book had the same conundrum. The book in the beginning was kind of a separating technology. It separated the elite uh, from everyone else, and literacy was actually a separating uh, thing in society. It was actually a fairly radical idea to, that everyone should be able to read and that everyone should have access to books. And, but even still, the way that the books were used in technology, uh, used in classrooms to teach, was very different in the schools that I intended. So some of the schools that I went to, the book was used essentially as a conveyor of knowledge. And the teachers saw their roles as giving to the students the knowledge that the teachers had. And so the book was a way of transporting that knowledge to the student. But I had other teachers that saw the technology of literacy, of reading and writing, as a kind of gateway to the world. And so those teachers 
both taught the skills of reading and critical thinking about what you read, but also provided some of the background knowledge necessary to sort of build a framework on which I, c I could learn. And so those teachers assumed not that what I needed to learn was what they knew, but they assumed that I would be learning my entire life and that what they needed to give me was a framework for, for learning. And they needed to teach me the skills for using that technology of reading and writing in order to participate in a community of learners and a community of, of, of people who thought about ideas. And that I would then, with those skills, learn the things that I needed to know in life. And, and they did not imagine that I would learn those things in school. What I would learn in school was the, was the skills to acquire those things. Now, in, in exactly the same book, uh, in the same way as the book, I think that those two approaches to using computers and the internet um, also exist today, and you can see them coexisting now. I think there are many people who imagine a computer primarily as a kind of teaching machine, a new blackboard or something. You know, it's another kind of book for carrying knowledge, maybe one that the pictures move around in or, or something like that. But I think that the, the best teachers see the, the computer, and particularly the connected computer, as a kind of gateway onto this vast world of, of resources. And they realize that a student is someone who, for their whole life, is going to be taking advantage of that gateway to learn the things that they need to know. And that the things that they need to know are not something that the teacher can teach them right now. And so what they're doing is they're teaching the children the ability to access that gateway. And they're teaching the children the framework for understanding the knowledge that they find through there and for navigating, navigating that gateway. And that's a very different way of using technology. And I think it is gives those students such a great advantage that I don't believe that a student can fully participate as a citizen of the world unless they have that, those skills and then unless they have those abilities. So I think that we have to solve the problem of giving the students those abilities. And I, I think there's some barriers to that. I don't think it's going to be easy, but I think that there are sort of three specific things that we need to do in order to give students that power. Because I think once they get that power, then they'll take it beyond anything we can imagine. And so the first is probably the easiest, is access to the technology. Uh, that seems very daunting right now in a world where um, so many children don't even have access to the technology of books. Books are in scarce supply in lots of the world. So the idea that every child should have the ability to connect to the internet through computers seems a little bit far-fetched. But fundamentally, um, the technology of computers and connectivity is actually much less expensive and has much lower ecological impact than the old technologies of learning. So a computer and internet connection actually costs fundamentally much less than a school bus or a road or a physical book. Um, not today, perhaps, because they're new and the forces of commerce are, are still working uh, to exploit it and exploit the profit from things that are new. And, but those cost curves are coming down, and fundamentally, there are things that put less tax on the, on the resources of the world than the physical infrastructure of the old ways of education. So I think we can, fundamentally, we can't afford to do that, and I think that is a reasonable goal that every child in the future should have access to this connected digital technology. I think it's a very realistic goal. In fact, I think that's the easiest of the three goals that I'm I'm going to mention. Uh, the second goal is the one that I think perhaps this group has the most to contribute to. Um, because as, as Margaret Archer pointed out, I, I think very eloquently, the information that is out on the internet now is not very well organized for learning. 
It's organized for commerce, it's organized for entertainment, it's organized for many other things. Um, but in fact, it's very poorly organized for education and learning. And it's actually kind of remarkable how much children learn from it given its very poor organization. But if you can imagine something like a, a, a curriculum, and by curriculum what I mean is a, a framework of connections between things. So imagine something like what you saw the Ross spiral curriculum as being kind of a framework and imagine that being an organization of material that's out there on the internet. Imagine there was some such organization of the material that, that people need to understand to be citizens of a sustainable world. Um, and that that pointed people to resources in many different languages and many different formats to information that helped with the teaching and understanding of that material. Then we could create a, a set of content on the internet, not so much the content but the, the, organiz the organization of the content, so that someone that um, could navigate that material and go really beyond the abilities of their teachers um, and learn more about it. Um, and their teachers would not be in the role so much of conveying the knowledge that they had, but much more in the roles of being mentors, guides, um, and help direct, uh, help guide them through that or help them when they stumble. And a very different role uh, for a teacher enabled by the computer. So we would enable it with the, with the content. And it's, it's a sort of obvious comment. I mean, with books, obviously what matters is what's in the books, not the technology of the books. And the same thing is true with the internet. What matters is what's in the internet. And what's in the internet right now is actually not very well organized for learning. So I think that there, there are very few people thinking about how we need to organize that material. And I think the kinds of thinking that I've heard at this meeting is exactly the kinds of thinking um, that needs to go into that of how do we structure that so that people from all over the world can use that as a resource um, to get their kind of common knowledge to be a global citizen. And then the third goal, uh, which I think is also perhaps even more daunting but achievable, I don't think it's quickly achievable, is the teacher training. Um, if teachers take on this new role of being kind of guides to this vast resource that's out there, they're going to need a different set of skills. First of all, they're going to you know, need to use the, um, the technology themselves. Right now, it's as often the children that are teaching the teachers how to use this technology as vice versa. Uh, so the teachers need to be given the skills to navigate uh, this information. They need to be given an understanding of its organization and a system to organize it. And they also need to be given the skills to um, guide the students through, evaluate what, where the students need, um, need to be pointed. And it's, it's really, I think, a very different kind of a skill than simply conveying knowledge that you already know. And so I believe that's a, a very large problem, but I also think that's an achievable problem. Um, and of course, you know, we're not, we're not going to solve the goals that we've set out for ourselves easily. But I think that once we do, um, we have an opportunity to perhaps educate our children better than we were ever educated ourselves. I think our, our children are actually beginning to learn a set of skills that causes, causes them to think in many ways better than we think. They're able to use these digital technologies as a kind of prosthetic for their thought, an extension of their thought. Um, they no longer need to know things in order to use them. They can find things they need to know and they can find connections between things. And so I think we have the opportunity for um, creating a generation of, of students that have the capacities to solve 
the huge problems of creating a sustainable world. And uh, I'm, I'm optimistic, and I was made very optimistic by the presentations today, that in fact they, they will have those capacities. And, and we, just have to, we just have to enable them to allow that. So I will stop with just showing once more that picture. Um, if I can have the slide of the, of the whole earth again. And the reason that I like that slide, can we have the slide of the whole earth, please? So I can imagine a world in which every child looks at that picture and sees that as their home and feels a sense of responsibility for taking care of it and sustaining it and actually has the, the skills and the connections and the, the knowledge to take care of it. So thank you very much.